It's time for New Wellness TV with Dr. Lee. Join your host, the accomplished Dr. Sherilyn Lee, as she welcomes the leading experts in health and well-being as they explore the advancements in natural health, physical fitness, nutrition, integrative medicine, and self-discovery. Good morning, a good day, everyone. I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for tuning in. There's so many places you can be and so many things you could be listening to, but you're tuning in right now, listening to New Wellness TV with yours truly, Dr. Lee. I want to thank you. I am so excited for my guests who I have today, and because we're covering a topic that so many people are having so many problems with. I was in the store in the market last night and ran into a dear friend and told her what the topic was going to be today. And she said, that's one of my problems. Oh, my goodness. I'm so happy that you're having a topic dealing with environmental conditions as it relates to the libido of men and women. But I want to just say that my guest is a renowned known. And she studies hard. She is an MD, PhD, uh, Dr. Lou, she is phenomenal. And I just want to say to show today, we're going to cover a lot of information. So I want everyone, please get your pen and paper out now. Please share this show because everyone from birth in utero to every age is being affected right now. So you must take notes and take heed so that we can help you to have a better quality of life. So you can have one. That's why I have a better quality of life. And most people know my story of being in a coma twice. And I have a great quality of life and a grandmother of 10. So this is what I want for everyone else. This is why I'm doing the show today. And this is why I have my fantastic guests with me. So we're going to be covering a lot as it relates to EDC. And a lot of you might have heard the initials EDC, which stands for Endocrine Disturbance Chemicals. And these chemicals disturb your whole endocrine system, which is your entire hormone system, which in will cause you to have problems with decreased sexual function, uh, respiratory, um, mental problems. You, every, endoc every system in the body is affected. Your lung system, respiratory, nervous system, Every system is affected. So we're going to go through, through today with my wonderful guest who loves the research and has a lot of wonderful information and to help you to help yourselves and help your family. Thank you so much for joining me, Dr. Lou. I'm so excited. I'm so excited that we can share this information to help people heal. That's why I'm excited and that's why I'm smiling because we shouldn't have to suffer. It brings tears to my eyes sometimes to see so many people walk in my office suffer needlessly. So I am so happy. But first of all, Dr. Lou, tell me, you know, you're a medical doctor and PhD, but now you're more into so many names for it, functional medicine, integrative medicine, comprehensive uh, complementary medicine. There's so many names for holistic medicine, as most people sort of know it. Tell me why, number one, did you go into medicine? And then I want you to tell me why did you go into more the holistic approach? Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, Dr. Lee, my mother is um, a, a Chinese cardiologist. She's MD. My grandmother is, was a Chinese traditional healer. So I grew up in these two generations of incredible women who want to love and care for the sick and the weak. Yeah. So, you know, I grow up uh, to want to be like them because I can see their uh, incredible full life uh, revealed um, to help others. And I feel that is something I thrive for is to help as many people as I can. Um, I decided to follow my mother's path mm -hmm. because as you all know, uh, Western medicine uh, gives you certain rescuing power when people are in emergency crisis. Yes. But quickly after I started becoming an internist uh, in Mount Shasta, California 20 years ago, I became very disillusioned 
about the way Western medicine address chronic illness. Yes. Not only they not rescuing people in any ways, they're simply managing the sickness. Yes. The problem is um, when we learn about Chinese medicine, when you use drug to manage symptoms, what happens is the human organs become damaged as a consequence of polypharmacy, right? That's yes. number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, people are losing the quality, the desire, the love, and the incredible vitality because they're adding more and more treatment to cover the symptom or merely treating the numbers of the lab and diagnosis. Right. And, and you know, I just want to say so very easy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you know, you have so much a wealth of information. This is why I'm going to have you on monthly because you have a wealth of information as well. And we both kind of went into the same um, trend, even though I'm not a physician, I'm a PhD and nurse practitioner and physician assistant and you name it. But this is one reason why I got away from the hospital clinic rim too, because of my own health and seeing how this, this, what you said, they're, they're not looking at the person. They're treating a disease. You, you never look at the person and treat the whole person. And that's what I don't see. As you notice, there's been a shift in the paradigm. Uh, where they're starting to look at, and you see uh, advertisement now with a lot of HMOs. Oh, we treat the whole person yeah. now. It took you how many years yeah. to treat the whole person? You know, which is sad, and it's still not quite there. So one medicine, yeah. uh, you give one medicine after another after another, and that suppresses another system, and all the medicines are, are disrupting our endocrine system. So even when it comes yeah. to hypertensive people, you know, and people who are diabetics and you have more and more and more. Well, I mean, why aren't you healing people's kidneys instead of putting more and more people on dialysis? That's just clueless to me. I don't, I, you know, I know why. And it's big, you know, we, we know why. But, you know, it's just sad to see people are, uh, I just want to share this one little thing. There was a, a little cartoon kind of uh, deal where this man said, this doctor came into a room of a patient sitting there and he said, you know, he tells the whole family and all the doctors are standing around. They said, by golly, we got it all. You know, the patient is lying in the bed. You know, visualize this patient lying in the bed. And the doctor said, by golly, we, we got it all. We got it all. Only thing left in the bed is a head. There's no body. So they got it all. There's no cancer. There's nothing, but it's only a head. Where is the quality of life? That's my whole premise of what I do. Where's the quality? You might not right. have every disease covered. You might not say everything is gone, but your quality of life is going to be so much better when you do things that we do in our practice. And we're going to talk about too on the whole detoxing and the healing. So yes, we're going to tell you all these things that are happening to you, but there is a cure. I won't say cure. There is a better quality of life and getting these yeah. toxins out and then you want to know how are they there. So at New Wellness yeah. Healthcare, we do the testing, the same as you, uh, Dr. Lou, is doing the testing. We do the testing to find out what is going on. And so as you go through this journey, that you know that your body is healing, which is so imperative. I'm going to let you take the floor now and run with it. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Lou. Wonderful. So um, Dr. Sherry Lee has been an advocate for her patients and finding the best way to improve their lives and also the life experiences. So I always tell people, you know, we all have, we all are, you know, dying the day we are born yes. and how we are going to experience life to the best capacity we can. Yes. Um, I don't have judgment if people want to do the surgeries, the burning and the killing and the drugs, mm -hmm. because that's what they, if they, that's really what they want. Um, that's okay with me, right? Somebody have to do that. But I really want to awaken the general public yes. and share with them life can be lived in such a pleasure, joy, vitality, and abundance. Yes. Life does not go on down the hill until we have 500 diagnoses, right? So, and, and, 500 um, and 500 pills to take as well. 500 appeal <laughs> on the multiple uh, organs removed. Yes. <laughs> so um, I want people to understand 
um, right now we're facing the biggest uh, challenging time in human history. Yes. And we're hoping it will get better because as people are wakening up to the chronic suffering mm -hmm. and deterioration of our life, yes. some of, some days we have to say enough is enough. Yes. So um, the first step is to make toxins visible. And in the past, uh, I would say six months, I have been working with national level physicians to massively testing people's toxins and help them wake up yes. to see how much toxins they are loaded their body with and teach them how they can get rid of the toxins because our body love to heal. Yes. Our body have all the elements to heal but you got to get rid of the dirty blockers, yes. right? Yes. So um, I want to share with people this screen. Uh, we're going to talk about endocrine disrupting chemicals. And of course, people say they're different kinds of chemicals and uh, what are the dirty dozen, right? What are the main endocrine disrupting chemicals? Um, I want to go over... Um, what is hormones? Hormones are produced by our endocrine system. We have a cascade of them from pituitary, hypothalamus to pituitary, to your thyroid, your sex hormone, your adrenal gland, including your pancreas. Now, I, I just want to—I want to—I want to just stop you there, only because I want the people, um, our, our, our listening audience, to. Have get a clue of where these hormones are located. Most, most, mostly everyone know where the thyroid is located. The pituitary gland, they know, maybe know it's in the brain. The adrenal glands sit on top of your kidneys. Um, yeah. So you want to know where these hormones are sort of located and a little bit about the function as we go through this journey because then you have a clearer understanding what they're secreting, what they're doing, and when things are off balance, it's not just one. So when you go to a doctor or you go to, I would say a doctor, because they're going to, if you say, well, I have a thyroid issue, they're only going to look at one hormone. You know, in right. most cases, they just look at TSH. They don't even look at everything else. And they don't look at the pituitary. So you got to look at yep. all the hormone systems. This is why um, EDC, hormone disruptive chemicals, affect all the hormones. It's not going to just affect one. So you have to be very clear as to these hormones um, and these endocrine uh, glands and where they're located as well. Because that's going to tell you a little clearer picture of what's going on with your body. Yep. So as uh, we know, hormones are produced by each gland. Yes. Hormones are then carried in the blood in the free form or bind form to a protein to the peripheral target receptors. Now, this is very important. If you have poor circulation, the hormones will have trouble reaching the target receptors. And then once you get to the receptor, the receptors must be fully functioning for the hormone to have its benefit yes. or physiological effect. Mm -hmm. And today we found hormone disrupting chemicals are not only interfering the transportation of the hormone, but also the receptor availability. And then once the hormone finishes its effect, it needs to be metabolized safely by the liver, oftentimes, and getting rid of it because you don't want the hormone to fly around in your body for too long. No. So endocrine disruption chemicals affect the play, affect the hormone function through production, through transportation, receptor blocker, metabolism disruptor. So there's a lot of different steps. These, these chemicals can affect us. Now, people say, how do you know I have this endocrine disruptors? Oftentimes, people have symptoms of low sexuality. They don't have sex drive. They don't have reproduction that's normal. Uh, women oftentimes have trouble sleeping, gaining weight, have trouble feeling anxious, you know, just feeling anxious, depressed. And also some people just, you know, measure their hormones, their levels are normal, mm -hmm. but it is not working. You know, I just talked to a woman, she, when she was going through menopause, she went to see her 
functional medicine doctor. Yes. And she started the bioidentical hormone program and because she was not sleeping, right? Right. So she started the hormone and immediately she started losing hair. She's not sleeping. She said, doctor, doctor, you told me I need to get hormones. Now I get hormones. Everything gets even worse. Yeah. How could that be? I've seen it. Right? Mm-hmm. So what's really missing is the endocrine disrupting chemicals yes. have been blocking not only the <laughs> liver, but also blocking her receptors. Mm-hmm. So the hormone replacement therapy today in the 21st century must require all physicians to look into the endocrine disrupting chemicals because otherwise the benefit is not predictable anymore. No. That is no longer sustainable. I have been teaching physicians who are into bioidentical hormone treatment. You know, these are open-minded, integrated physicians. Exactly. And suddenly they are seeing patients falling off the wagon. Yes, because they are. Because the endocrine disruptors are everywhere. There, they yes, they are. And that's from, we, we'll go through that, especially in the makeup makeup people uh, you know the women and then the perfumes as we know there's so many but we'll go through the ones that are in your home the ones in environment the ones that are just they're just all around us and they enter the body in in so many different levels through breathing through skin um they're going to enter the body so some things you use topically that are endocrine uh disruptors so we you know you just have to know what's going on because i I thought that, you know, the hormone replacement therapy uh, was going to be something great until years ago, until this started to happen. And I told people when we, in a nutshell, what you just said, when we looking at the hormone receptors and making sure that everything is go- doing what it's supposed to do, it's almost like a key. So if you change a lock on the door, you know, just change it just a little bit, then it's not going to open that door. So this is what's happening with these receptors and everything, get it into the pathway of where it's supposed to go. If it's changed just slightly, it's not going to work. And this is what's throwing your system off. Mm -hmm. Correct. So let's go over, uh, I want to start with a story because uh, sometimes people can relate to a story. Yes. Um, I have a 63 years old gentleman and he lived in Mount Shasta, very active and healthy man. Okay, I'm going to show you his data. Okay. So he came because he is, um, his wife was getting so healthy. So he said, you know, Dr. Lu, I want to try something for myself. Um, I don't know if Tony can, can show this slide. Okay. Uh, can you see it, the slides? Yes, he can. Okay. So this is the man that came in and said, you know, I'm we're kind of losing you a little bit. We lost you. Um, Dr. Lou, we cannot hear you. Um, we're working on it. So maybe we'll just remove his lab and you come back on so that you can explain it. Okay. Because I, you know, um, I think our viewing audience had a chance to see the lab that's posted. So if you're listening to the show, please go to the YouTube channel so that you can actually view what we're showing on the screen. Okay, so um, right now we we kind of lost you, Dr. Lou. I don't know if you can hear me, but I do want to say that uh, <clears throat> once you start doing the testing, um, making sure that, and, and blood tests can be done. This is done through the blood. So we can do the test and we can find out exactly okay, what's back. going on. Okay, so she's back. Okay, so we'll just talk about his lab results instead of posting it because some kind of way we kind of lost you there. So go ahead. Got you, got you. Okay, that sounds good. So basically, uh, the man has a testosterone of 262, and his uh, PSA is elevated to 4.6. 
His fasting sugar is also elevated to 110. His ferritin, which is iron overload yes. uh, in the liver, is mm -hmm. much higher. You also have mild elevated CRP and mild elevated liver enzyme. And okay? CRP is your now, inflammation he gave marker. Me two months. Mm -hmm. All we did, exactly. Mm -hmm. And he did two months of the detox program uh, cellularly. And he said, I am off Prozac, Lipitor. I feel 20 years younger. I sleep deeper. I breathe much easily when I'm skiing. My sex drive is better. I drink less alcohol for some reason. I <laughs> okay. just feel so good. Yes. My chronic low back pain is almost gone. Okay. Now, I did not give him testosterone. His testosterone went up to 451. Wonderful. His growth hormone improved by 30, 40%. His PSA came down. His fasting sugar came down. His ferritin is better. And you can see his CRP also come down, his liver function come down. So the lesson I learned is when you detoxify the body yes. of stress and environmental toxins, yes. your body will heal itself naturally. Yes. Okay. So that's the part I always want to encourage people who are interested in testosterone therapy or hormone replacement give their body three months to detoxify and see how much the body can do by themselves, right? And then you can always do hormone. Um, I really, I strongly against jumping into hormone replacement right away without cleaning up your body. Yes. And that is my biggest lesson I learned after practicing hormone therapy for 20 years. Yes. And I'm, thank I'm so thankful that so we, we do that, have a program. We do have a program for detoxing. So we'll be sharing that at the end of the program. And the people can call me at New Wellness Healthcare. And we can tell you exactly what that is to get you going on the program, which is phenomenal. And I thank you so much, Dr. Lou, for sharing it with me some years ago. So it is a phenomenal program. Yeah. And uh, that's how we met. That's how we met. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now, um, Dr. Lee, I like to go over the dirty dozen. Um, this is different dirty dozen from the fruit and vegetable dirty dozen. Yes. This is the top 12 hormone disruptors. Okay. Okay. I really want people to go. Um, number one, they can screenshot this one or they can go to EWG and then just Google hormone disrupting chemical. And you can download this little booklet. Uh, it's free. It doesn't cost anything. Great. I support EW. I want people to donate money because they actually really spout for our um, for for people for the consumers. Wonderful. Now the first number one uh, endocrine disruptor is called a BPA. Uh, we we're going to go into BPA. BPA was initially discovered by a pharmaceutical company to be an estrogen replacement option, okay? It's called a bisphenol A. But quickly during their uh, phase one trial on animals, they found BPA caused breast cancer, gallbladder infection and stones, and uh, proliferation of the uh, reproductive system and they found it's actually very dangerous uh, for metabolism. Mm -hmm. So they decided to get rid of it, okay? So the food packaging company somehow discovered it. And they said, oh, this environmental estrogen, pharmaceutical estrogen, is actually really good to make, you know, plastic lining bottle, yes. the can lining, mm -hmm. and the receipt in the market. So... Now we tested people, 93% of Americans have environmental estrogen in their bodies. Okay, now when we talk about synthetic hormone, there's nothing stronger than BPA. Exactly. I just want to know what BPA do is they stimulate the fat cells to grow 
they stimulate the insulin resistance, they actually make man grow man boobs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, BPA has been difficult to be eliminated because it's so persistent. Uh, and a specific uh, cellular detox mechanism is required to remove BPA. And I just want you to know sauna itself probably won't do it. And also, you need to make sure you have a plan to eliminate BPA completely and prevent being BPA being recycled back into the liver. And that's mm -hmm. actually a process we need to go deep in to dig in and get rid of BPA. Yes. Okay. Now, BPA has been um, number one cause of, uh, you know, female obesity also because they grow the fat around the hip. So if you have, you know, a lady that used to be skinny and suddenly have this huge hip, you need to understand that is not from bad food alone. That is definitely BPA in action. And it's also um, the thighs. Hormone the th related. It's the thighs as well. It's the hips and the thighs. Thigh. So you'll see it in the outer thighs yeah. too. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. So if you go to a store, try to skip the receipt. Um, don't buy canned food. Make maybe sure there's no nothing in the lining. You know, eat whole food fresh. Also, mm -hmm. plastic bottle. You have to be really careful about the plastic bottles. And I think the ironically, Dr. Lee is I'm a cyclist. And it's very hard to carry a metal bottle or glass bottle on a bicycle. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so we continue to struggle with, mm -hmm. the you know, we use the, we use the water bottle that is plastic. Right. And you, um, you, another word of warning, mm -hmm. sometimes they replace BPA with something else. Um, you have to be careful because all plastics are made of petroleum product. And if you look at what is petrochemical, Petrochemical are the hormones of the dinosaurs. They are the estrogen of the dinosaurs. So you just have to understand it's not a benign natural product. It is right. mimicking your hormone in many other ways. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's number one. Number two is dioxin. I'm sure many people heard of dioxin. There are many different kinds of dioxin and they are found in, in cheese. Okay, very, very sad. They're in cheese. A lot of people like cheese and uh, because it's very pretty addictive. You know, once you are addicted to that casein, it's yes. hard to get off. Mm -hmm. But they found out dioxin actually even at low level in the uterus, you can start having premature sperm quality decline and lower sperm count in men during their prime reproduction years. And the dioxin work in low dose. That's, that's something that, um, you know, really it's a powerful carcinogen. Right. It can affect your immune system and reproduction. And you know something- And many of them didn't know. Yeah. That di di dioxin is too, was heavy yeah, in the sanitary napkins and tampons and was linked to endometriosis yeah. as well. Yes. 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 So. PCOS. Yes. So um, I really want people to know. I know a lot of people on the paleo diet. They just need to know products, including meat, fish, milk, eggs, and butter, are most likely to be contaminated. You need to cut down on your exposure to eat fewer of animal products. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is mm -hmm. actually from EWG. This is not from plant. You know group this is actually from ewg right. talking about dioxin in animal product exactly okay. now num number three dirty dozen is atrazine um, um i'm sure people heard of atrazine is the number second most used chemicals in spray atrazine to male frogs okay these are developed male frogs. If you spray atrazine on them, they will become a female frog. Okay, you, you can actually study this study. They, they spray on the female frog, 
okay? The Mayo frog, it will into a male frog into a female frog, okay? This is a this is scary. It this is. is absolutely scary. And don't take our you word for not. it. Research it. You're for yourself. Research, Research it for it. yourself. Or even better, have a frog and do experiment. You will see one frog will be having eggs with the other frog. They can actually they can actually show you. Atrazine is actually linked to breast tumor. Uh, recently, we have a beautiful anti-aging doctor. She started cutting off her breasts uh, because she thinks that is the best way to prevent breast cancer. Mm -hmm. But little does she know if she's exposed to atrazine, even though she has no more breast tissue, because you can never remove all breast tissue, the, the breast tumor will grow in the spine and other places. So I just really want people to know true prevention is not to cut off your organs. Yes. Now, if you really have tumor, you know, a lot of bleeding fibroids and stuff like that, you know, you, you, yes, you, 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 you know, you can cut it off, but I think for prevention, you really cannot just cut off your organ. No. Um, I'm really against that approach. I think a lot of people do that mm -hmm. because of the fear, but true prevention is to detoxify your body yes. that is causing, you know, these chemicals that's causing cancer. Yes. What do you think, Dr. Lee? I feel the same way. I know a lot of people <laughs> have, and we, we had an entertainer, um, the mm -hmm. well-known who had uh, bilateral breast cancer, uh, breast surgery, and everybody start doing the same thing. I won't mention the name right now, but I have a patient yeah. who did the same thing, and they said, my goodness, it was so minute in the breast, it was barely there, but she, she wanted to have the mastectomy. So I also feel that way. I mean, I've had um, polycystic uh, breast disease in the past that are all gone, um, but I didn't ha have a mastectomy. So I feel that you really should, removing organs and radiating organs and all these other things are gonna set you up for other problems down the line. Because you're not going to get rid of it. Because people forget this is one. This is the whole body. It isn't isolated. The liver is not isolated by itself. The thyroid is not isolated by itself. That's blood circulating through the body. So removing that organ is not going to change a lot. Yeah, yeah, very good. So um, the number, I think number four chemical is phthalates. Phthalates is a specific chemical that mm -hmm. has been used a lot in cosmetics and plastic food containers. Yes. And recently, my husband and I decided to throw away all the plastic containers and change them into glass mm -hmm. um, because the benefit is really getting rid of these, um, you know, we call, these are not xenoestrogens. They are just, we, we call cellular deaths. Um, this is actually showed phthalates can kill your testicular cells. And it's called a death inducing signaling in testicular cells. Now, a lot of people. So you're saying death? You're saying death? Death. The, the death. Okay. The testicular cells to die. To die. Okay. okay. Um, now, what's interesting is I recently met a beautiful yoga teacher in Los Angeles. She goes to these parties a lot. She is um, actually looking for a mate. She's beautiful. <laughs> okay. She's mature. Mm -hmm. She's financially stable. It is not me. And, you know, she's okay. successful. <laughs> she goes to the party. She's like, Dr. Lou, I don't get turned on by anyone there. I mean, she loves them. They're friends, but she does not feel the testosterone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, many people don't understand hormones are actually uh, poor, like a pheromones. If people have good hormone level will attract their mate effortlessly, yeah. effortlessly. Okay. Mm -hmm. If a man have low testosterone and he can be rich, he can be looking good, have good mm -hmm. clothing. But if he doesn't have testosterone, the woman will not be attracted to it. Yes. Period. Um, because we are 
biologically made to attract the man with high testosterone. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the way it is because that's the biological biological imprinting and survival mechanism. Right now, what's concerning me is the millennials are not having sex. Do you know that? The young people are not having sex. <laughs> and I'm not promoting sex, but I'm, I'm really yeah, thinking, I understand. You know, what's going on with yeah. the young people's endocrine system mm -hmm. is they are losing it. They're losing it. The woman, we still produce uh, estrogen. We still, sometimes we don't produce as much progesterone because of stress. But man, you know, the testicular cell death is not a joke. You want to say where it's Why? located so that they would know where the testicles, are, and most men know, but a lot of people, sometimes mm -hmm. these are medical terms, they may not know. They know the right. street name, yes. So I would support, you know, people use all natural glass made product. Uh, if you are using cosmetic, you got to make sure they are all natural ingredient, not synthetic hormones. Yes. Okay. Anything with phthalates, anything with phthalates, with recycling label number three, you got to avoid it. Got to avoid it. Um, because once it gets into your body, start killing your testicular cells, uh, you know, it's probably hard to get out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So decrease exposure is really a lot of work. It's, it's actually not one. a lot of work. Yes. You just go one. to the store and buy everything made of glass. Read your labels. And don't, yeah. Read the label. Don't use anything you can't spell. Right. Yeah, so or, or pronounce. If, 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 the, if it's olive oil, uh, sheer butter, you know, that you can spell. It's from nature. Mm -hmm. But if you are reading phthalates and pregnenolone 40, you know, all these things, mm -hmm. those are hormones. No, no. I would avoid that. Mm -hmm. um, perfume is actually hormones. Um, you know, people like perfume a lot. Mm -hmm. um, many of them didn't understand. They, they mimic the man's cologne, mimic testosterone, try to attract women. Uh, the woman's perfume maybe worked, Dr. Uh, Dr. Lee. It actually did work for a while, but after too much of the fake hormones, the internal signaling, you know, the woman's nose, mm -hmm. it's also sense this person does not have true testosterone. Exactly. So I just wanted to know because the man really liked perfumes. Okay. Right. <laughs> um, so it's not going to be a sustainable way to attract women. So the next one is perchlorate. This is actually one of the biggest hormone blocker against your thyroid. Now, I actually had a personal experience. I was doing really well, doing fantastic. My thyroid is recovering from autoimmune. Then I went to China for about a month. Mm -hmm. I came back and gained about eight pounds. Um, no, I'm a little person, so the eight pounds actually do show a little bit. Okay. So I said, um, what happened? So I measured my perchlorate, and my perchlorate was elevated to about 75%. I started measuring people in Mount Shasta, in Los Angeles, in Mill Valley. Many people have perchlorate. Now, perchlorate is a rocket fuel. How did it end up in our water? Do you know? Well, it shows actually a lot of food and water are contaminated with perchlorate. Perchlorate come from the fire, the little uh, flares on highways. Uh, our police officer use mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, indicate there's some kind of uh, uh, accident. accident. Right. Well, it turns out perchlorate is very water soluble. If they're left on the freeway, the rain comes, we are having rain today, it gets, they get washed into the water and it gets into your aquifer. And next thing is it, it shows up in your water. Okay. Yeah. Now big country, crowded city, lots of accident could be a reason uh, for increase for chlorate in your water. I recommend everybody do a re reverse osmosis uh, water filter. I know it's not the most efficient water saving uh, osmosis 
uh, water filter, right. but it's worth it. Mm -hmm. You yes. could do one and then you know, Costco has a cheap osmosis. You can use it. Okay. Um, so this is a very important uh, contaminant. We even find it in Mount Shasta, which is really sad. You know, Mount Shasta has the best water. How did these people get perchlorate? You know? Right. right. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, firework, you know, people like firework. You, do you guys like firework? Well, I like to watch them, you know, at a big, <laughs> at a big <laughs> field somewhere, but no, I don't want to do it myself. I know. We have the July 4th firework. I think that could be a reason we have perchlorate in our water mm -hmm. now. Yes. We just have to be careful with that. Yes. Okay. The next one is fire retardants. Uh, this is the one that we, it's, it's, a, it's a government regulation. Is they found um, fire retardants are regulated. You're, the furniture have to be tested for fire safety. Apparently some people smoke in bed and set the bed on fire. So now a non it's a conventional bed, particularly such as Tampapedia, you know, lots of the foam, memory foams, um, are you know many different cheap versions they're they're supposed to be there to support our body right. when we're aging it's mm -hmm. supposed to be good for our body but many people don't know those uh, petroleum made mattresses are easily catch fire right they can like explode so the the regulation uh, to put these chemicals on the bed is tremendous and they really have to. It's not like the manufacturers just want to. Is they really have to pass the testing. So that's why they put so much fire retardants on the bed, on the foam memory bed. And you know, uh, we actually change both of our bed into natural bed now because once you learn how much uh, fire retardants is on the bed, you know, we sleep on it eight hour day you don't want to smell absorb those chemicals right and now you okay. know they make your pajamas the kids pajamas that same way uh using that type material so it's it's, right. it's in a lot of uh things that we wear too so we have to really watch the labels your your pillows are supposed to be mm -hmm. um uh, flame, non flammable as well too so you have to watch what it is you're wearing at night to sleep in yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. And another thing people um, didn't know, infertility, you know, when we talk about infertility and they talk about in the past, you know, the infertility clinic went up by 400 times uh, in this country. Yes, a lot of money to be made, but nobody is asking why this fertile woman and man suddenly cannot get pregnant. Exactly. And we need to look at endocrine disrupting chemicals. Um, you know, lots of people have the children through that infertility treatment, which is great. Mm -hmm. But at the, at the same time, many of the children are already loaded with chemicals that's going to affect their life, you know, very quickly. Exactly. So um, some of the fire retardants have been shown to cause male infertility on the third generation. And so sometimes pa the parents don't even have symptoms, the children don't have symptoms, but then the children's children will show complete infertile for the rest of their life. Exactly. It become a species extinction on the third generation. So, you know, of course, you know, Americans are really into the immediate benefit. You know, do I have symptom? I don't have symptom. Therefore I don't have to worry. Uh, it's really short-sighted. Mm -hmm. this, this whole deal we call dysfunctional medicine or dysfunctional living yes. is we only look as far as 50 years. We don't look at next generation. No. We don't look at planet health. You know, if our planet is loaded with this endocrine disruptors, the planet will keep going, right? It just, we're going to see 60% of wildlife extinction and the humanity will not be here. If everybody is short-sighted, that's what's going to happen. The planet will be keep going without us, you know? Oh, yes. I just want people to know it is time for us to wake up together and really take our life into our own hands. We cannot rely on this 
conventional way of no. dealing with a crisis, getting the treatment for a symptom. We got to look at the root of my purpose in life um, is to help people build a healthy, non-toxic community. Okay. From, you know, I, I, I just want to, I just want to say this. I have to stop you for a minute. Cause I was just uh, given the clue that we have five more minutes. So um, not well, that I want you to go through it fast, but I do want to cover everything today. So we have about actually now four and a half minutes. Okay. Okay. Four and a half minutes. Let's go through. Let's go. So lead, <laughs> also a disruptor. Lead. Uh, arsenic is often well. time uh, happen in rice. You need to soak your rice. Okay. Uh, mercury is endocrine disruptor. Many people don't. Let's, let's go back real quick though to rice in the arsenic because a lot of people were unaware. Um, yes. I had a patient who I did a test on. And she actually thought her husband was poisoning her because her test kept coming back high of arsenic and not knowing she was eating a lot of rice and it's coming through the rice. So is this brown rice and white rice? <laughs> yes. So basically a lot of the rice, uh, even organic, if the water is contaminated, you have to be careful. Yeah. So we usually have uh, people soak the rice. Soak okay. It soak it. For a while. Okay. Yeah. So. The next one is mercury. Uh, how many people think mercury is endocrine disruptor? You know, we have a, you, you need to make sure the mercury is out of your system. Yes. Okay. Um, fluorinated chemical. We talk about the Teflon pans. Um, apparently there's a study showed the, the, the woman was cooking and then she had the pet bird and the pet bird actually died because she was cooking with the Teflon pans. So you can see the, the little animals are more sensitive. We, yeah. We're just bigger bird. You know, we're not different. Right. So if it can kill a bird, you, you better take care of <laughs> Get rid <laughs> of it. System, yeah. uh, organophosphate, uh, basically it, the pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, they are endocrine disruptors. Um, I want to mention, you know, organophosphate, glyphosate is a organophosphate. Glyphosate is in Roundup. You know, lots of weed killers yes. is number one sprayed chemical in the U.S. Yeah, you make you you want to make sure you avoid Roundup, okay? Please, um, gly glycoester is basically used in lots of the uh, cosmetics and uh, uh, cleaning product. Make sure you use natural cleaning product that's made of essential oil, yes. citrus, a lot of good stuff. You know, okay. I, I just want to say the best so, way that I find to clean your sinks and counters, which I don't use it in, in my yeah. mouth, but it's actually go to the dollar store and get mouthwash. You can really uh -huh. clean the count. I mean, it's, your chrome is so beautiful. Your toilet smells <laughs> fresh, <laughs> but just go to the dollar store and get some mouthwash to clean up your, your, your bathroom. It's really amazing. Yes. That's fantastic. No, we only have one. No, we have eight minutes. Uh, <laughs> we want to talk about detox. People are really concerned about detox uh, and confused too. What I want people to focus is a intracellular detoxification. People don't understand if you're just having colonic, sauna, exercise, eating fiber, you're just eliminating more toxins. Right. But the intracellular hormone disruptors are much smarter than you. Yes, Trust they me. are. They tend yes. to bind the cellular receptor stronger than your own estrogen. So you got to have a cellular mechanism called the glucuronidation. Glucuronidation is different from glutathione, okay? It's actually a biochemical processing of the chemicals utilizing glucurate, which is produced by your liver, to bind the toxins and peel it off. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to know that. And once the toxins are bind to glucurate, it's no longer toxic to your body, then it's going to be transported to the liver mm -hmm. and the liver will come out from the small bowel. You want to make sure this process is complete. You want to eat a lot of fiber, you want to take more glucurate to prevent recycle. You want to make sure the elimination is two to three bowel movement a day. Um, just something very simple. Your cellular liver 
elimination. So that's right. a complete circle. And when you we... don't want to, yeah, yeah, you don't want to have just just sweating or just no. pooping. That's no. just not enough. Not enough. And when we're looking at liver, there, and we won't get in it today. We will um, when, when we have you back next month. And look at the phase angle phase one and two with liver detoxing. So we're going to get more into that. And we don't want you to just listen to the show and go run out and buy these type of products because not all products are created equal. What, what she and I work with are products that have been researched. And so we know by lab testing, we know by not so much on how you feel, but at a cellular level, everything's been tested. So this is what I do at New Wellness, and this is what Dr. Lou does. It's just amazing. But please, you know, in listening to the show, don't run out and buy these different type products. You want to have the right products. And I know we're about to wrap up here, and I want to say, Dr. Lou, you have a wealth of information. We will have you back next month. We're going to come up with a date of the month so everybody know you're here. But I do want you to, if you can sum up everything in 30 seconds or less, because I we're about over here. Uh, what can you tell our audience? 30 seconds or less. Okay. So I think three things. Number one, detoxify yourself on a daily basis. Number two, eat very clean. So what is clean is organic as much as possible, whole food. So you can av avoid all this chemicals, mm -hmm. mostly plants. Plants have fiber, phytonutrients to help you, okay? So then daily cleanse, whole food, plant-based, organic food. Number three, move your body. Your lymphatic need to move. Move. Your body needs the earth's energy and get out and move. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful to know you, Dr. Lee. I'm so grateful to know you. And don't leave because I want to tell people really quick. And when you get up in the morning, if you just take your legs and go back and forth real fast, back and forth till your whole body starts to shake, that is a very good way to start waking up the lymphatic system when you first wake up. There are some exercises and we go over them later. But I just want to thank everyone for tuning in. Please share, share, share and subscribe to New Wellness TV with Dr. Lee on our YouTube channel. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time to tune in today to listen to the show. Please share, share, share. As I always say and end the show, please repeat after me because words are power. We know how powerful the I am is. I am. I am. So grateful. So grateful. That I am. That I am. A magnet. A magnet. For miracles. Everyone, oh hug somebody, love yourself unconditionally. Have a blessed week. Join us every Wednesday live at 11 a.m. for a new wellness TV with Dr. Lee. Remember, healthy mind, healthy body. Dr. Lou? Okay, I'll call her. Okay. Yeah, so I think having...